Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today we are in the Central Desert, in the large clearing a bit west of Dust Devil Ridge, building a Chinese castle. This build was suggested by Jeffrey Sorm on my Sanctuary build guide, so thank you for the suggestion Jeffrey. For this build I did a little bit of research and found that examples of Chinese castles I could find bore a decent resemblance to traditional Japanese castles, which made formulating this build a little bit easier. I wanted this castle to be a little less claustrophobic than my last builds, as surrounding a castle with thick walls might be good for defence, but it's not the most comfortable environment. So without further ado, there's a lot to get through, so let's get started. Firstly I started off with the base plate, drawing out a large courtyard and starting off the base of the castle itself. For the courtyard I chose to use a combination of Yamatai and Kitan foundations for a contrasting colour scheme, and I liked the fusion of these materials so much that I used them throughout the entire build, using Kitan as my main material and Yamatai as the sort of accent. I built the entrance to the ground floor two tiles above the courtyard, as I wanted a workshop basement area below the ground floor where all the manual labour will occur. This build has a pretty massive total area, and probably costs a lot of resources to make so it might not be practical for everyone, especially if you're playing official. It could probably be cut down in size if you so wished, but seeing as it's supposed to be a grand Chinese castle I'm pretty happy with the size, even if this was near a 10 hour build. When I'd finished the courtyard and entrance, I started to then build up the walls. I started off on the ground floor, building the walls two tiles high and separating the floor into the various rooms I wanted. I then built two towers at the back of the floor, which will be the staircases between all the different floors vertically. I also built a small veranda along the back side of the build for decoration. Doesn't really provide that great of a view, but it's a nice addition.
I then capped off this floor with ceilings and began on the ground floor, removing some ceilings and replacing them with foundations in the basement to place the gate frame on. I then started building the side wings first at the height of two tiles high, then building the central room four tiles high, placing flat apex roof gables on the side wings. I then built up another floor on the main structure for the private quarters, building the walls again two tiles high. Next I fenced off both the front porch, back veranda and top floor balcony, then building the roofs of the wings, building them to a flat apex and capping them off with rooftop and rooftop end pieces. I placed awnings on the top balcony, then building the staircase tower roofs up to a pointed square apex. I then started to build the roof of the private quarters, capping off the floor with ceilings. I ran into some stability issues at first that meant I had to place some more pillars on the ground floor in the main throne room to support the roof, but in the end it worked out quite nicely and added some nice structure into the room. I built the roof up to a horizontal pointed apex. Next I placed awnings on the porch in front of the small rest area by the stairs, on the back veranda and on a small balcony I created on the ground floor at the back of the castle. I 
Finally, I built the walls around the courtyard. I added awnings across the walls, including a raised section above the gateway, and then doors around the build. Finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to of course furnish. Approaching the build, I've lit the castle with ketan braziers and hanging lamps, using plenty of legionary statues around the build. Entering the courtyard, this area is packed full of different things. Statues watch over the gates and the entranceway whilst the castle towers ahead. The courtyard, as I said, is full of various different things, such as the rest area under the stairs, drums to signal when people are approaching, archery practice ranges, saddlers workbenches and more. The porch sits nicely above the courtyard and is connected to the walls on both sides to allow for easy movement of soldiers. Entering the ground floor, we reach the throne room. This serves as something of a courtroom and a town hall-esque venue, allowing the king to hear complaints, requests and testimonies of people living nearby the castle. I've added galleries in the throne room above to allow people to watch proceedings. The king's throne is front and centre, protected by the king's guard of three rusted knights. Next, we enter the dining room. This is a luxuriously decorated room where the king and his noble peers will dine. The kitchen and kitchen storage flank the dining room on both sides, and are well stocked and prepared to serve the nobles waiting in the next room.
Heading across the hall, we reach the servants' and soldiers' quarters, a well-structured yet comfortable area where the aforementioned peoples can rest, eat, and sleep. Even the lowly servants within the castle are treated fairly well, and are given ample time and space to relax after a hard day. Heading into the staircase towers, this is the only way to traverse the floors of the castle, along with access to the back balcony on the ground floor and the veranda on the basement. Heading downstairs we reach the workshop. This is a huge extensive area that encompasses all sorts of manual disciplines from smithing to woodwork, tanning to alchemy and more. This is the heart and soul of the castle so to speak, producing all of the furniture, decorations, armour and weapons the castle needs. The workshop is nicely segmented, ensuring everyone has ample room and storage space to work with.
Heading up to the top floor, we reach the private quarters. On this floor, there are three rooms, two guest bedrooms and one master bedroom. The guest bedrooms are a little small, yet comfortable, with the master bedroom being a bit bigger and a little bit more luxurious. In my opinion, the bedrooms are probably the weakest part of the build. I think they could have done with a, uh, a restructure or just a little bit more work in general. This floor also has views down through a hole in the floor to the throne room and access to the top floor balcony, which provides fairly impressive views across the desert plateau. And there we have it, a Chinese castle in the central desert plateau, just a bit west of Dust Devil Ridge. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to Jeffrey Sorm for this suggestion. I am getting a little bit tired of castle builds at the moment, but I think this is probably my best one in terms of both structure and decoration. If you've enjoyed this video, leave a like, and let me know in the comments below if you have any build suggestions for future videos. As usual, absolutely anything is welcome. Don't forget to both follow me on Twitch and join the fun on Discord through the links in the description. YouTube is currently my full time source of income, so if you enjoy the content and would like to help support the channel so I can continue to put out the best content possible, consider becoming a patron. There are multiple tiers of support from $1 to $20, offering many benefits from a mention in every video, to Discord roles, and even sneak peeks of every new video before anyone else. The link to my Patreon is in the description below, so if you'd like to support the channel, feel free to consider becoming a patron. On that note, a thanks to our current patrons Sammy, Zodialot, Randar and Dumfox. If you're new here, feel free to check out the rest of the content on the channel. There are new Kern Nexiles videos coming every Wednesday and Sunday, so if you like what you see, subscribe and ring the notification bell to be the first to see the next video, and to join us on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.